Have you ever heard of the Atlantic Pacific Rule? This is a really great way of quickly seeing how many significant figures are in a value. I think it's the best trick. There's a few other tricks out there, but I like this one a lot. I think it's pretty simple, and simple is a good way to go if it gets you to the right answer. In the continental U.S., the, the reason why this is called the Atlantic Pacific Rule is just to tell you left from right, P is on the western side, A is on the eastern side, because the Pacific Ocean's on the west, the Atlantic Ocean's on the east. You have to come into this trick already knowing that. If you didn't know that, there, you just learned some geography, and now you're into this idea. So this is really just coding for you that P is going to be on the left. P is going to now also represent the word present, and it's all about the decimal. If a decimal is present, we're going to start this trick on the left-hand side. A is for Atlantic, but it's also for absent. If the decimal is absent in a number, then we're going to start on the right-hand side. What do I mean? Well, let's deal with some where the, the, number is abs or the decimal is absent. When we write normal numbers like 14, or let's say we have something 130, we don't necessarily show a decimal because we're not showing you any tenths or hundredths numbers. In this case, these numbers have the decimal absent. On the left-hand side, this would be where things are present. So if I have a decimal present, like if I had 14.0, then in that case a decimal is present. Or what if I took it all the way to 14.013? I'm making a really precise, precise measurement there, and I've got uh, lots of decimal places. Let's start with the absent side. If the decimal is absent, here's how this works. You are going to cross off any zeros starting on the right-hand side on the Atlantic side until you get to the first non-zero number. Now in this case, we don't have any zeros on the right-hand side before we get to the first non-zero number. The first number on the right-hand side is a non-zero number, it's a 4. After that, every single number is significant. So that would mean that our 14 here has two sig figs. If you look at our 130, well, the decimal's absent, so we're going to start on the right-hand side and we're going to cross off zeros until we get to the first non-zero number, which is our 3. Now that doesn't mean we change this to the value of 13. It's still the value of 130, but that 0 we know is not significant, whereas the 3 and the 1 are. So this number also has two sig figs. If we get to the Pacific side, this is where decimals are present. Now with our 14, we actually had a device that could measure out and estimate that tenths place. And so if we start on the Pacific side, we're looking at the decimal's present, we're going to start on the left Pacific side and cross off any zeros until we get to a first non-zero number, which will be our 1. Now, there's zeros here, we just don't show them because they're all empty. And so, really, we just don't have any zeros shown that are not sig figs. They're just absent from our value. So, our 1, our 4, and our 0, these are all significant figures. So, this number here does have three sig figs. If we look at the next one, 14.013, same rule, we start, since the decimal is present, we start on the Pacific side, and there are no zeros to cross off, so the 1, the 4, and this 0, and this 1, and this 3, and any other numbers that would follow would all be measured out numbers, these are all significant. So that number there has 5 sig figs. Let's actually show you, though, a Pacific side kind of number where there are some zeros to cross off. And this would be for really small numbers. So if I had something like 0 0.0002, if I had a value that small, then I'd be dealing with something where I have small zeros as placeholders. I'd start on the present Pacific side, and I cross off all these zeros till I get to the first non-zero number, and that's my first one that's significant. It's also my only value there. So I do have one sig fig. If I looked at something that was a little bit more precise in measuring that for me, maybe I could get 0 0.00020, and that's tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousandths place. It was able to measure out and report an estimated value to the hundredths place. In this case, I would cross off all of these zeros my 2 is the first non-zero number, so that is significant, and any number that follows it is also a significant figure. So this value here would have two sig figs. Think you get it? Let's give you a quiz. Here's seven values. Go ahead and pause your video, and on a separate sheet of paper or something like that, see if you can figure out how many sig figs each one has. Then hit play, check your answers.
All right, so in this first one, the decimal is not present. So I'm going to start then on the, on the, or I'm sorry, the decimal is absent. So I'm going to start on the Atlantic side, and I cross off my zeros until I get to my first non-zero number, and then all of these numbers are significant. So this one has a total of four significant figures. Did you get four sig figs? Good job if you did. If not, uh, I don't know, rewind the video, try again. You'll probably get it right because you already know the answer. For the next one, the decimal is present. So we're going to start on the Pacific side. We cross off all zeros till we get to the first non-zero number, which is a nine. And then all numbers following that, whether they're zeros or not, they are significant. This was actually a measured out value. The device that used this that took this measurement was able to measure out and report that last zero there. These other ones were just small placeholders. So this has two sig figs. Decimal is present. And so again, I start on the Pacific side, but there's, there's nothing over here to cross off, so all four of these values are significant. We've got four sig figs. Another one where the decimal is present, this first zero is just a placeholder, but then everything else, man, it's a really precise instrument, everything else here is measured out. So sometimes I think a misconception is that students see zeros and they just think, oh, zeros aren't significant. It depends upon whether they're being zeros for placeholders as far as how small or how big the number is versus they are numbers that were actually zeros that were measured out and shown to be zeros. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sig figs. On the next number, 100,000, decimal is absent. So really all of these zeros, we start on the Atlantic side, all these zeros are just placeholders. We only have one sig fig here. In the next one, there's a decimal present. And so this little three here is actually showing that all of this was measured out. It truly was. And we've measured out to the tenths place too. So every single one of these, there are... Hey, sorry, my battery died. So anyway, I hope you got the idea, and I hope you got the right answers. Now, there's one more thing that uh, we have to consider here, one little extra bonus. Let's go back to that scale that measures really big things. Oh, sorry, I uh, got a little bored waiting for the battery to charge, so drew a, a logo of the best band that has ever existed. Anyway, so uh, let's say we put something on that big, huge scale, and we put a car... And if you remember correctly, this scale can only measure to the hundreds place. And so we get a readout of our car that only has precision to the hundreds place. And let's say that this car, this vehicle, truly we know that this thing weighs 2,000 and let's just say 2,000 and 14 pounds. Again, sorry if that's not a realistic estimate of how many pounds a car weighs. But let's say that that's the real number. Now what's it going to say on our scale? Our scale measures to the hundreds place, so it's going to call this 2,000, and this 14 is not enough to round it up, so it's just going to report 2,000 pounds on our digital balance. Now with that in mind, how do we actually report that? Because we truly do know that it's above 2,000, and also since it measures to the hundreds place, this zero has been measured out and estimated, so it is also significant. How do we report this 2,000 pounds having two sig figs? Well, the way to do it that scientists and engineers will do it is use scientific notation. So what we're going to have to do is say 2.0 times 10 to the third power. That's how many pounds we have. Now with sig figs and scientific notation, remember how some zeros, like in this case these three zeros, would just be placeholders to let you know the number's big? Well, in scientific notation, this part here, the times 10 to the third, that's what those zeros are. These are just placeholders. So this is just telling you the size of the number, that it's in the magnitude of the thousands. These two numbers here, these two are telling you the precision. Precision of the number 
and that we have two sig figs. And this portion of the number, the part with the decimal, this also follows your Atlantic Pacific rule. A decimal is present, and so we start on the Pacific side, and there's nothing here to cross off, so these two numbers are significant. So sometimes you'll do calculations, and you might have to round to the right number of significant figures, and you might find that you have a certain number where you're going to have to report that zero as being significant. But I can't place a decimal anywhere in this number because it'll change the value. If I put a decimal here at the end of the 2000, well, that would make all of these zeros significant, and so I can't do that. And so this really is my only way, using scientific notation. And then one more thing. What if I had this number, 10, and I wanted to show that it had two significant figures? Well, I could use this scientific notation method of doing it and say 1.0 times 10 to the first. I could do that. But another thing that I could do is I can just write in the decimal, and that says that these two numbers are significant, the 1 and the 0, and that there isn't a tenths place number that I have to report. So there's... Sig figs, as far as what they are and how to identify them, how to know how many sig figs are in a value. There's some future videos that you can check out, and we're going to show you how to work with sig figs and round to the correct sig fig number. Thanks.